just a quick video to teach you some of the ways that you can help to improve your child's vocabulary at home. Vocabulary can count for about 10 to 15 percent of the marks in an, in an 11 plus exam, so it's really important that a child goes into that exam with good vocabulary. It's also tested more in the SATs these days. Before I start with the tips, you will need a good quality children's dictionary at home. A lot of our pupils look up definitions on the internet these days, which can be helpful, but sometimes the definitions are a little bit confusing and they don't really understand what they're reading. So a good ch children's dictionary is necessary. I will put some suggestions in the description of this video so that you know what you're looking for. The first and probably most important way of teaching a child new vocabulary is to use advanced words when you're talking to them. Remember, they learnt to speak in the first place by listening to you say words in context and then they've got to understand the meaning by you repeating it over time. It still works the same way as they get older. Nine times out of ten, your child probably won't even bother to ask you the meaning of the word. They'll just kind of take it in and remember it next time. But if they do, then either you can explain it at the time. Occasionally, you might want to get them to look it up in a dictionary. But if that's getting a little bit boring for them and they're perhaps avoiding even asking you the definitions, then another fun way of looking up the definition can be to use Siri on your phone, or I'm guessing there'll be something equivalent on a non-Apple phone. Um, but if you just use the home, home button, press it and ask what the meaning of a word is, then the um, automated assistant will tell you what the meaning of the word is. A lot of the kids really like using technology in that way, and it just adds a little bit of variety so that learning new words isn't too boring for them. The second way of improving vocabulary is working through a word list at home and making flashcards. I've got some flashcards here that I made earlier. I've written words in different colours, which I recommend you do at home. The first reason I've done that is because the children enjoy just using different coloured pens, so it adds a little bit of variety. But it will also help them to remember the words more clearly if there's a different colour associated with each word. So these are just made by writing the word on the front and the definition on the back. It can get a little bit tedious to keep writing out definitions, so sometimes you may want to use a thesaurus and get your child to write synonyms of the word instead. If you are writing synonyms on the back of these, what I suggest you do is write one or two words that your child already knows the meaning of, and then write some new words. So for cease, I've written discontinue, finish, terminate and refrain on the back. Finish and maybe discontinue would be words that your child already knows and then they can start associating those words with the new words like cease and terminate. The most important thing with these flashcards is to make them a part of your daily routine if you can. So you can stick them up in your fridge and get your child to look at them maybe while you're getting dinner or something like that. You can even put these in your glove pockets and test your child on the way to school. You don't need to go overboard with this, maybe two, three words a week. And the most important thing here is making sure that your child learns those words properly rather than just going through loads of words that aren't really sticking. If you need some words to make the flashcards out of, then I will include a word list in the description for this too. If your child's a pupil with us, they will also have done one of our vocab books, which I've got here. If your child finished this a little while ago and maybe hasn't gone back to it, now would be a good time to just revise some of the words. What you've got on a lot of the pages are these tip boxes in black. They've got the definitions of prefixes, root words and suffixes. So for example, this page says the prefixes retro and re mean backwards or back. So you can test your child on the words here, but use those tip boxes to help you to give them clues. So you might say, what's the definition of retract? If they're not sure, ask them if they can remember the definition or what the prefix re means. And can they remember what tract means? Tract means to draw or take. So once you've given them some of these clues, they might be able to start refreshing their memories and remember what the definition of retract is. Not only does learning these root words help your child to remember the words they already know, but it can help them to decode words that they come across in future. So it's really important to keep going back to this vocab book 
and use the root words in there or add any root words prefixes of your own that you learn in everyday life. If your child is using the Bond Verbal Reasoning or CGP Verbal Reasoning books, you'll be used to seeing the types of questions that have a word and it asks for the child to identify synonyms or antonyms of that word. If your child's struggling with those questions, remember not to just get them to look up the word and the answer, but also the other words in the question, because those could come up in future as well. You don't have to look, up, look them all up at once, but one week you might want to focus on those words and cut back on some of their other homework instead and just have, kind of have a vocabulary week. Those can also be words that you can put on your flashcards and revise over a couple of months. After a couple of months, maybe go back to some of your older books and see if your child can answer the questions that they couldn't answer before because they've now learned some new vocabulary. The last way of helping to improve your child's vocabulary is getting them to listen to audiobooks. Even avid readers can struggle with vocabulary sometimes because they don't know how to pronounce the words or they haven't fully grasped the context from reading the story. So audiobooks can add a little more context around the word for them, they can hear the expression that the characters use when they're reading out a word and that can help them to grasp the definition as well. Um, I like to use audible.com or .co.uk for audiobooks and you can, it's cheaper if you get a monthly subscription on there but uh, Gutenberg, I think it's .org.uk also have some audiobooks of older books that are free and I'll put the links to those in the description for this video as well. If you found this video to be helpful, please give us a thumbs up on YouTube or Facebook. And if you'd like to keep track of our future videos, then subscribe to us on YouTube or like our Facebook page, Kim Learning.